Welcome to my video blog. My five o'clock kitchen, AKA what I did on my quarantine vacation. We're going to start the blog with beef stew. It was not my first choice for my first recipe. That was a little more fun and a little more my personality, but desperate times call for desperate measures and this is what I had. So today we're getting beef stew. Here in Michigan, it's a cloudy, breezy, cool spring day. Maybe the last time I'll be able to make beef stew. And probably the first time I've made it this winter as well. But today I'm gonna walk you through and let's see how it goes. So the first thing we have to do in the five o'clock kitchen is get the five o'clock beverage. In your kitchen, it could be a nice cool glass of water, some nice tart lemonade. In this kitchen, it's beer. Hopefully Anheuser-Busch will see this and send me a case. I'll send you my address. So let's crack this and get going. These are the ingredients you'll need. Four pounds chuck roast, two cups, says beef stock or chicken stock, either or. Three cloves of garlic, you measure that with your heart and not by the size of the cloves. Says three, I put in six. Two onions, as many peas as you want. I love peas. Carrots, as many as you want, three, four. Those are big, so there's gonna be a lot of them. One cup of red wine. Oh, about four tablespoons of flour. Some thyme, two bay leaves, which I do not have. Again, these are desperate times. And this, of course, is for the mashed potatoes that go with the beef stew garlic roast mashed potatoes with cream cheese. So, in going back and looking at some of the video, uh, I do have to tell you that if you're going to make this recipe, go by the ingredients list and not by watching me because I've improvised. And that's the difference between cooking and baking. I'm a cook. I improvise all day long. Baking, not so much. You have to be a scientist to bake. I'm not a scientist, just a cook. So, we're gonna start with the beef. I have four pounds, chuck roast. I always do a chuck roast and not stew beef. Stew beef, you never know what you're getting. Probably some of that nasty English roast in there, and that's horrible. So I've got most of it cut. I've saved a little piece here for you to let you know why you need to cut out the silver. This, my friends, is silver. You don't want that. That's connective tissue. Cut it out. Doesn't dissolve like that yummy, yummy fat does. Get it out. And it won't grind in your insincorator either. You need to get it out of there. So you, it peels nicely. It'll tell you where it goes. So, but I'm gonna cut it quick. In the pot. Cut them all evenly if you can. One inch pieces, one and a half pe pieces, whatever floats your boat. More of that nasty silver. Okay, here we go. We have our beef, boom, in the pot, to the beef, salt, and lots of it, more than you probably are used to. I love the Surgeon General, whoever it is, I don't even know who it is. Add salt, double up on your blood pressure medicine if you have to, pepper, Get 
give it a toss. Maybe a little more salt. Toss it on up. Wash your hands. Dr. Fauci says wash your hands. And I'm doing that. Because nobody wants my cooties in their stew. So I'm washing, washing, probably not 20 seconds, but I haven't really touched anything gross other than over to the stove. I'm going to start the oven. 300. Boom. To the stove. My Lee Crusade. She's seen things. Don't judge. She's been through a lot, just like me. <coughs> Little olive oil. Gotta let the pot heat up a little bit. We're gonna do some sear in here. With my beef, I did dry it a little. You saw it on the paper towel, cut it, let it dry a little bit. That way you get a good sear. Any meat that you want to sear needs to be dry. So my oil's hot in my beautiful Lee Crusade. Half the beef goes in. We're going to sear that up good. Get that nice brown crusty stuff on the bottom. You'll have to do it in batches because you don't want to crowd it. So we've got the meat seared off. Nice and brown. Four pounds of chuck roast in here. So what we're going to do... Oh, I see my soup chef has arrived. Um, this is Yoshi. Yoshi, this is the world. He's a lot like the guy from Hell's Kitchen. He just barks orders and doesn't do much work. So, in goes the meat. Get that meat out of there. Hopefully there's some brown bits in the bottom. Now into this good rendered fat, we're going to put two onions. Brown those up, get them nice and soft. Cooking, I feel, is love. I was going to say food is love, but my videographer would shut me right down. So I'm going to go with cooking is love. If someone cooks for you, they love you. Maybe. Maybe they're just trying to kill you. I don't know. But if I cook for you, I love you. So we're onto the garlic. Three slash six cloves. So what you're going to do is you're going to dice it fine. Don't get it out of the jar because it's yucky. Alright, into the cool with the rest of it. Boom. Okay, so we're going to add this to your onions. Turn down the heat. If you cook garlic too high, it's going to get bitter. And that's bitter, love. And that's a different shell. So in goes the garlic. And you just want to cook it until it gets fragrant. Just so you can smell that garlic cooking. In goes my flour. 
And you're going to want to cook this till it gets a little bit brown. Cook out that floury taste. I turned the heat up a little bit more to about medium. Get ready to add my red wine. No need to really reduce it, just stir it in. Get those lumps out of that flour. All the good stuff. Scrape it up, scrape it up. All that good brown stuff. Thicken that up just a little. In goes the beef for chicken broth. Time. I don't know. About a tablespoon, I guess. What time is it? It's five uh -oh. o'clock. And in goes the beef. This will cook in that low, slow oven for two and a half hours, three hours, whatever you want. Put beef in, all those juices. Oh, and the two invisible bay leaves that I don't have. Those go in at this time as well. I'm going to put the lid on it, put it in the oven, about two and a half hours. My inspirational message for the day. In the oven, Oops. get back there. Now, I'm going to show you my trick. Three or four large carrots in a steam basket. I steam my carrots and my peas in order to keep their color and their texture. If you cook them in the stew, they turn brown and mushy. If you steam them and add them at the end, they keep their integrity and their color. So I'm gonna steam my carrots right now. I'll throw the peas on top because they are thawed. They just need to heat up. And then when the stew's done, in the pot they go. Mashed potatoes. Who doesn't love mashed potatoes? If you don't love mashed potatoes, you're wrong. So I've cut three pounds, four pounds potatoes maybe. Again, look at the list, don't listen to me. All uniformly sized. Inch, inch and a half. They'll cook faster and more uniformly. So I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer, let it simmer 20, 30 minutes, and then we're gonna go into the garlic, cream cheese, milk mode. Taters are fork tender. I don't know, I think that took around 30 minutes actually. So I'll just drain them. All right, so I just kind of put the milk in there and eyeball it. I put a cup in there. I'm going to stop at that. I'm going to put the lid on, or no, first I'm going to put in the cream cheese. Eight ounces of cream cheese in the pot. And I'm going to let those hot potatoes do their work. Heat up the milk, kind of melt the cream cheese before I mash. So it's been, I don't know, two, three minutes. Milk's warm, the mashed potatoes and the cheese. Gonna 
squeeze that roasted garlic in there. Mmm. Uh huh, that's right. A little more salt. A little more salt. Pepper. And I'll mash this to see if it's the right consistency. One of these days I'm going to get one of those fancy little hand blender things. But I don't have one today, so. Mmm. Last up for the potatoes. We're just going to put a couple sticks right on the top there. I'm going to put the lid on and we're going to let the butter melt. And this is a trick that I learned from the late, great John Madden. Yep, you heard it right, John Madden. Football fame. Thanksgiving. One year. One of those bad lion games. Put the butter on the top, let it melt, and you just fold it in. Don't stir it in. Because then you can't taste it. You just swirl it in a little bit, gently. You can taste the butter, the potatoes, the cream cheese. Ooh, that garlic, that unctuous garlic. I always wanted to use that word, unctuous. I don't really even know what it means, but the cooking shows use it, so maybe that's what it is. So, my stew is done baking. My steamed veggies, they've held their texture. I'm going to put that in that delicious hot stew. Stir it up. Now these veggies will keep their vibrant color because they were not cooked in the stew. So it's pretty, it's healthy-ish. Let me take a minute to explain the uniform. Um, these are trying times. This is something that I don't actually have to get dressed. But if I have to go outside, I won't be arrested. So maybe next time I'll have some button pants. But if things are going the way they have been, probably not. So from now on, this is the uniform. I have my mashed potatoes. Butter just stirred in, not whipped in. You can see it just sitting on the top there. And you'll taste that. So here's my potatoes, nice and creamy. Here's the stew. Normally I would like a little fresh parsley for the top, but again, here we are in quarantine. So, here's your stew. Here's your mashed potatoes. Cooking is love. Now get in that kitchen and make some love. Thanks again for joining me in my uh, five o'clock kitchen. Uh, thanks for getting me through some of this uh, quarantine vacation um, come on back again I think I might do it again maybe after this is over maybe I'll invite some guests and in the meantime cooking is love cheers